Hello and welcome! Today we're going to be taking a look at the animation player, which is also one of the better nodes in the Godot engine. Let me just create one now. You can see it opens this little uh, animation dock at the bottom, and this is basically where all the animation stuff happens. Uh, the animation player is fantastic. The basic idea behind it is that if you have a variable of some kind, you can animate it from one value to another, and this works for any value. Uh, any value, you can have numbers, strings, uh, booleans, anything you like, really. I don't know if you can do it with dictionaries, but possibly you can. Probably you can, in fact. So let me start off with animating something simple, and in fact, the simplest thing is our beloved icon.png. So I've just added that here. Now in the animation dock at the bottom you can create a new animation and I am going to call this default because that's just I just like to name it that and first what you might notice is now that I have this animation dock open and I have an animation uh, set up here it adds this whole track thing but in particular it adds these key icons next to all, all of these properties now basically if you click on this it will keyframe this value at this particular um, time. So at time zero, this is our value. Fantastic, super simple. So if we want to then change the value, stick it over here, get back to our node inspector keyframe again. And now you can see that animation very quickly just drags the little guy across the screen. And so that's the basic idea of an animation. You can do this for position, rotation, scale, any of these properties. You can even animate the actual uh, texture in the sprite if you wanted to. I don't think you should do that. If you're trying to do an animation, there are way better ways. Maybe I'll do something on that. But you could do it if you were just kind of insane. So let's take a, a bit of a closer look at some of this stuff in the animation doc. So this number right here is the length of the animation. And sometimes you want a 5 second animation or like a 15 second animation. It doesn't matter, it can be whatever you like. This is how long the animation will play for before it gets to the end. In addition, you have this kind of, when you're moving these keyframes around or when you're moving the sort of time seeker, there's this, it's, it is determined by this sort of time resolution or the, the snap value I suppose. So we could set this to very small. Um, FPS, if you wanted to do it by frames, you could do that. Um, that's one frame per second. This is 60 frames per second, so you can see. Uh, it looks like it still gives the value in seconds up here, but if I'm correct, this would be the 120th frame, because that's two seconds at 60 frames a second. Anyway, there's that. I leave it in seconds, and usually I just have it at that interval because it doesn't really matter that much when I use it. In addition to that we have this autoplay button so you know this animation it won't play on its own actually if you start this up nothing happens if you press the autoplay button and you give it a go it autoplays very self-explanatory. Another very useful little icon is this animation loop button if you toggle that on it will loop the animation so let's take a look at that. It plays it once and then it interpolates from the last keyframe to the first keyframe and then it goes back to the beginning and it will do this endlessly. So let's get a little bit more into what we can do with some of these keyframes. As I said up here, if you click on a keyframe and you have your inspector tab open, you will see the time the keyframe sits at, which, you know, you can usually leave that alone because you can just drag it back and forth. Um, you can see the actual value. In this case, that is a vector 2 because that's my property that I'm animating. And you have this easing value. So you can, you know, this basically determines how it goes from this keyframe to the next keyframe. So if I want it to get there very quickly and then sort of fade in, that's pretty much that. So let's see what that looks like. That's immensely fast. Okay. But you see it does ease and you can change this however you like. Um, you know, you can make it like this if you, if you want it to start off very slowly and go up. It's easing, it's, uh, it's not too complicated. So I'll leave that at one for the time being. Um, 
Actually, I'll, I'll just curve it a little bit just for fun because I can do that. But in addition to that, you have this easing thing to kind of determine how the keys interplay between each other. There's also all this stuff. So here is the update mode. And for this, it's continuous because I want it to continuously interpolate between these things. Alternatively, I could have it as discrete. Uh, and that basically says don't interpolate at all, just make it snap between them. This is what you would use for, say, a boolean. You can't have halfway between true and false. It just is one or the other. Then there's these other two, which quite frankly, I have never used, so I don't know. Also, you can have uh, any of these, what are they actually called? Interpolation modes. Uh, you can have a cubic one, which <sighs> still got one, not discrete. There we go. It's a little bit hard to demonstrate because I've got the easing on. Um, but basically, if I had another frame here, particularly if it is the same frame, um, you can see it kind of, it does some weird magic with curves, and I use this a little bit sometimes. Um, so actually, if I just set that to not even loop, so it just stops at this point, you can see it kind of, even though it is set, you know, it should interpolate this way if I had it on linear, when it's on cubic, it does a little bit of, uh, I don't know, cubic stuff. So that can be useful if you want a little bit of extra bounce uh, and, you, and you don't have a, you know, want to keyframe it in. There's also nearest, which looks like pretty much similar to discrete. It has some uses. And then the last weird little icon in here is the loop interpolation or the loop wrap mode. Uh, so basically, um, by default, it's set to wrap, which basically means if it's looping, it'll go from this keyframe and it'll sort of loop the interpolation back around to this one because it knows by the time it gets to five seconds it's also then going to go straight to the beginning you can have it to clamp as well if you wanted to which basically says don't do any of that just you know play through and then loop at the end so you have some options but what if you don't want to interpolate a value because this is actually called a property track or a value track i'm not sure but um you can see all of these, they are values or properties of the node. What if you want to call a function or emit a signal or something? Well, you can do that, actually. Um, so let me just create a little function here. Um, let's call it hello. And all this is going to do is print hi. That's all it'll do. So when this gets called, it'll print hi. Um, now, what I can do with my animation player I can add this call method track uh, and I'll connect it to this because the methods I'm going to be calling are in this node so that I'll do that. Now at one second I'm going to click on this and I'm going to right click and do insert key and you can actually do this for any of them. I, you know, For call method if you press insert key it'll give you a nice little list of the methods in this node. Now it's a little bit finicky sometimes so you kind of have to save it a bit, try to do things which make it seem like it would update. Okay, well usually it does show up here, sometimes it doesn't, it can be a little bit finicky on updating the list of methods in the thing, but if you really uh, cannot find it in the list, just do a random one, click on it, and then change the name to the name of your function. And you can see it has these sort of arguments set up. Our uh, function has zero arguments, so you can set that to zero. If you did want to put some argument in, you could do this. That's zero. It'll have a type. You can set a value. All very good stuff. I use this quite a lot. Um, so let's try it out. So if I start up at one second, it calls our function. Fantastic. And because it loops, it'll do that every time. So we have now three instances of that happening. And that's very useful if you want to emit a signal at a particular time, or if you want to do anything like that. I highly recommend getting to grips with the call method track. And now I think we're kind of getting to the end. So there's, this is the, the last main thing I can mention, which is this mysterious reset track. Now, if you remember, when I actually went to a keyframe, one of the properties of my icon, the position but let's do the scale it asks create reset tracks now what does that mean basically this 
uh, reset animation here, uh, we'll have time very short. Basically, every time you save the game, every time you start up the game, it will uh, run this reset animation, and it'll just reset this back to this value. Uh, and trust me, I used the engine before this was implemented. It seems a bit odd, but it is very helpful because maybe you're working on an animation. Okay, I'll leave my cursor here, three seconds. You go do something else, you come back later, and you realize your animation is playing from three seconds onwards, and it probably breaks your game or does something catastrophic, I don't know. Well, this way, you know that no matter what, the reset track is going to be the state of your uh, scene, or of these properties, before any animation plays and it's very useful. So I recommend if you do uh, want to add a value, let it add that reset track for you. And if you don't like it, you can change the value to whatever you like here. So that's pretty much it. I'll just mention there are some very nice uh, signals here. Uh, quite often uh, I use this animation finished signal. Um, so, you know, I have some quit animation if you press the back button or something and it fades out, it fades out the screen and then when it's done animating it'll call this signal, I'll just see is this is this my quitting animation that just played and if it is, quit the game. I, I do that in pretty much every game I, I make so I highly recommend doing that and then there's any of these other signals you can use. So I think that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content like this. Uh, give me some suggestions. I don't really know what else to make. There is a finite uh, amount of stuff in the Godot engine, particularly stuff that I use as often as the animation player. So uh, any feedback is appreciated. Goodbye.